Hiya, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel. Today this video is a little bit different to what I normally do. Um, I am doing an ARC review as part of a blog tour for the Right Reads blog tours. I was provided with a free ARC by Penguin Random House in exchange for my honest review and for my participation in this blog tour. The book that I am reviewing is The Inheritance Game. This was written by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and is already out now so you can go out and buy it, you can buy physical copies, ebook and audiobook copies. There will be links down in the description below for links to go and buy this book if you so wish. So with that being said, I'm just going to get straight into my review of what I think of this book. The Inheritance Games is a story of Avery Kiley Grimes. She is from a low-income household, her mother has died and she's now being cared for by her older half-sister who essentially is a... I think she looks after the elderly, so they're very low-income. And one day, um, Avery gets called into the principal's office and is told that she needs to go to Texas because she has been named in the will of a billionaire and when she gets there she finds out this billionaire has left her almost his entire estate and she's never met this man before she has no idea who he is before this day and obviously his family is very very upset and it's all about the family and avery trying to solve this puzzle of why has avery been left all the money now Avery, I actually really liked as a character. I wasn't expecting to like her because at the beginning she was quite standoffish and cold, but I liked the way that she had this very analytical view on life, and I also liked how real and honest she was. She slipped up, she made mistakes, you know? She was told you have to keep this thing under wraps, and she immediately tells everyone about it. And like, she felt so human to me, and I really, really enjoyed her characterization. I also really liked her friend Max and her sister. They were two really good female presences in her life that weren't just there to talk to her about boys. You know, they were both looking out for her and they were the two people that she could trust in the world when everyone else seemed to be able to get her. I also really liked the family dynamics that we saw through the, um, <laughs> the family um, that obviously she was living with. And I really liked the sort of very stark differences between the four brothers of the family so that see if i can remember them all there is jameson grayson xander and nash um and i really like them all xander's my favorite because he came across as a sweeter pie and he just kind of was trying to be friendly with avery whereas especially grayson there was this sort of tension there where you felt he was a bit more sinister and then Nash came across as a bit of a fatherly figure and you know Jameson was kind of the heart for a bad boy I guess you could say and yeah I really like the varying dynamics and how she had these really different relationships with all of them I thought that the book did a really, really good job of creating tension. There are three main mysteries in the book. There is why did Avery get the money? What happened to this girl called Emily and who is she? And what happened to Tobias Hawthorne, the billionaire? What happened to his son, who some people say disappeared and some people say died about 20 years ago? And throughout the book, different parts of these mysteries start to overlap and things start to get revealed. And it really draws you in. And there's um, short chapters which really gets the pace going and makes you want to keep reading to find out more and to find out what's going to happen next. And that was something I really appreciated because with these kinds of books, you can often get lost in the family politics and the warring on either side of things. Whereas this one... Because it was told through the lens of Avery, who was completely alien to this family, you really sort of got to see the tensions and to see how the house essentially was a character in itself as well, and how well the different characters were acquainted with the house. Because this house is massive and sprawling. And every year, I think they said, Tobias Hawthorne, the grandfather, built at least a new room, often a whole new wing to this massive palatial building. And so it's a real, like, so many different characters and so many different things in play and they all bounce off each other so well that it creates this tension, this, like, melting pot of, by the end of the book, you don't know who you can trust, you don't know who's actually trying to solve the mysteries and who's not. 
and it's very I don't know how else to describe it other than there's just tension all the time in a really good way and in a way that just grips you and I really enjoyed reading that because it actually was more of a thriller than I was expecting there was a lot of plot twists that I wasn't expecting there was a lot of leaps and bounds that I wasn't expecting and yeah I actually was surprised by how much I enjoyed this book I was a bit suspicious that everything would be oh so obvious and it wasn't. I'm not going to give any spoilers but there are certain things revealed at the end that I was very shocked by and I think it was a really great book in the sense that it showed you the power of having an unreliable narrator which is what Avery essentially is because you, she believes a lot of things and you're led to believe a lot of things that maybe aren't quite as true as she thinks they are and she's also hearing things from the Hawthorne brothers who are obviously all biased in these situations and you have to kind of unpick who's telling the truth, who's seeing it from certain angles, what emotional investment do they have in this thing and that was really interesting because towards the end of the book especially you start to see how often everyone was telling the truth or everyone was lying but they were seeing it from different perspectives so things actually did fit together even though you didn't think they would and that was really really interesting to me and I really liked the slow reveal of how everything was connected. Now this wasn't a five star read for me and I think my biggest problem with this book was that essentially after Avery is announced as the inheritor and that she is going to get everything and she causes this big ruckus she essentially becomes irrelevant to the plot because pretty much nothing that happens could have like not happened without her other than the initial she inherited this money. I think if you put almost anyone else into the same situation it wouldn't have changed the plot in any way. Uh, yes she does solve certain things but often you find that a Hawthorne brother is already there and has already solved it before her and so that just makes you wonder like why is Avery here and that really bothered me that it wasn't resolved by the end and you like you you just feel like Avery is just there when this book could have been told in third person because it has that third person perspective through Avery essentially watching the family but it felt like her character didn't influence the plot very much and that she just was purely a device to make it a mystery rather than a drama and that if she hadn't been there yes it probably would have just been a drama and you would have just had multiple points of view of the different Hawthorne brothers but essentially the book wouldn't have been that much different and that really bothered me. Um, I wonder if she will become more relevant because there are more books. I don't know if it's just going to be a duology or if there's a series coming, but there is another book at least coming out next year. And I sense Avery might become more important in that book, but I feel like maybe something needed to come in earlier into this book to really make her like have a reason to be there because a lot of things happened where yes I was worried for her life but also I was kind of wondering why she was there what was the point of her character other than to cause this stir and that was a really unsatisfying for me but that was only one small thing that really bothered me I guess the, rest of the book is very well written in every other sense. I think the characterization is great. I think that the plot was really good and that, you know, the pacing was excellent as well. I thought everything was revealed at just the right sort of time. Um, and yeah, I, I would actually really recommend this book.